Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. It's a much be- much more beautiful day today. I uh, just met the new neighbors. Very nice. Um, both uh, husband and wife are nurses uh, for the local hospital around here. Not that local, but in Stony Brook. And it'll be good to have some medical uh, professionals around the area, you know. So um, they're heroes during this COVID era. As you guys know from yesterday's episode, I was really busy with my lawn. And... Uh, being that today is a nice sunny day, it's probably going to need some watering since I put seed down. So I might turn on my uh, sprinklers today just to check out the heads and stuff. Uh, also, I might go and visit my mom because I haven't seen her in a, a couple of weeks or one week since I dropped off supplies. Two weeks. And so I might have to go and mow her lawn because I don't think she's ever had it done, you know, since this thing all started, you know. Uh, I actually haven't really mowed my lawn yet, you know. But anyway, as you know from yesterday's episode, uh, this uh, lawn tractor, tractor number seven from my Mondo Mowers trade, has no compression. Zero. We put a compression tester on there, and it shows zero PSI. Uh, Also, it doesn't have any spark, which is unusual, because if the flywheel is spinning and the magneto is uh, on there, you know, I don't know how well it's on there, but, uh, and it has the um, kill wire on there. So maybe something's up with the kill wire. Maybe the magneto is not air gap correctly, but if that flywheel spinning, you should see spark unless the magneto is done, you know? So you, it has a, a myriad of issues that are possible. So we'll tear into that today by taking the hood off and just troubleshooting to see why it has no compression. In the meantime, but first, been talking to uh, my subscriber Elmer Hatcher he saw my video and he says he needs this gas tank from my uh, Murray number six the turd he says uh, his gas tank burned down a while back uh, from his friend so he needs a replacement to get his tractor going and I have it right here I have it listed for like uh, 56 8 58 bucks plus shipping and all so for Elmer, I'll do it way cheaper. So I'm going to take it off of eBay and just send this to him. Hey, look who's here. You Boba, you Boba fans. Uh, also, um, I had a guy on eBay who bought my wiring harness for my uh, LT4000 tractor. at uh, Mondo Mowers number two that I stripped down. Anyway, he asked me if I had the uh, left and right spindles to the uh, front end of that tractor. And I says, sure I do. He's like, oh, well, will you send me the spindles? I'll pay you. I'm like, sure. So I'm gonna take the spindles off of this thing and uh, send Elmer the uh, gas tank. Boba. Let's see how easy or hard it is to remove the spindles off this uh, front end uh, axle. So as you can see, I'm not troubleshooting the tractor. I'm actually in my son's car, uh, the Acura Legend, and I'm headed over to my mom's house because uh, when I asked her if she needed her lawn cut and if she needed any more supplies, she's like, well, actually I could use some supplies. And uh, also remember we had a big wind uh, last week, remember? And uh, well, she said that the neighbors told her that she had a few shingles that came off her roof. So today I'm going over to my mom's house and uh, bringing her some food and supplies. And at the same time, climb onto the roof and um, fix three or four shingles. I hope I don't slip and fall and die. As you can see from the front view here, got a nice little crack on the windshield that spread and spidered out into this big crack. I was watching a couple of Instagram um, ads that, I mean, I don't know how they know, you know, that I'm that I need it, but there was an ad about like this resin that you can buy that would fix this. I mean, I've I've bought that Permatech stuff to fix like spiders and 
you know, chips on the windshield before, but nothing like this, you know, uh, unless technology has gotten so good that they do make some kind of resin that you can just squeeze on there and it'll cure it. Let me know if you guys know anything about that stuff and whether or not it's just a scam. So I'm at my mom's house. We were in Queens, New York City. As you can see, lawn needs some attention. I'm gonna check off check out the roof and see what's up with the roof. First I've got some uh, milk, fruit, vegetables, potatoes, um, meat, steak, fish, poultry, I'm sorry, yep, fish and poultry, eggs, kale, spinach, Oh, and if you guys have ever stayed at uh, Double Tree Hotels, which I have a million times, they give you their patented cookies. Uh, recently, they um, released the recipe for their cookies so that people would have something to do during COVID. And so my daughter made some for Grandma. So hey guys, I'm sitting on my uh, mom's house's roof in Queens, New York City. I guarantee you I've never given anybody a view like this before and y'all seeing it right here. This part over here is not bad. I can stand on here without worrying about falling. That is very steep. And as you can see, there's a small piece that came off here. People who did this roof didn't do a great job. Kind of uh, substandard uh, shingles, you know? Now that I walk over here, looks like there's a piece that's gone over there. It's going to be difficult for me to get there, but I'll try to put something there to at least, you know, protect that wood from being wet. The view from here looks like I might have to clean the gutters sometime. This part over here is, as you can see, has blown apart. I could just, uh, I've got some of that um, flash there. I don't know how old it is, but when it heats up, it'll it'll melt. Slap some of that stuff on there. A couple of couple of nails ought to be okay. It's a small piece here that needs some covering. So if you guys could see in the distance over there, New York City is just about 30 miles down that way. Uh, that's just a bit of it. Uh, the skyline is behind those trees over there. But uh, this area that she lives in is a very desirable area. It's called Douglaston, Queens. It's uh, the second to last town that's right before the Long Island, New York City border. And so people who live in New York City or people who don't want to spend the money to live in New York City, and I don't need to tell you about what, a, what rent is like in Manhattan, um, a small 500 square foot area, which is actually kind of big, 500 square foot apartment in New York City is like uh, eight grand a month. <laughs> uh, and so you could drive a half an hour to the city from here and you're in the suburbs. This is what they call the suburbs, but it's still New York City, you know? Uh, houses are very close together. 
But uh, each house here, if you'll believe it, is a minimum of one million dollars. Minimum. Even a hunk of junk is a million dollars. You can you can take the house down to just the land. The land is eight hundred thousand. That's just how crazy the location is and the um, property value. Uh, over there, you can see she run, she lives just parallel to the Long Island Expressway, exit 31. So that's why it's so convenient. People would just get off the highway from work and you're home, you know? And then if you need to go to the city the next day, it's just a 20, 30 minute drive down to Manhattan. That is if you can find parking in the city. You know, for you big shots who live in the city, you have your own parking spot in a garage somewhere. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna get to work on fixing that first. I'm pretty much done there's a couple of spots where you know it was like right off the ledge you know and uh, I didn't want to take any chances because if I slipped that's it over definitely not pretty but uh, I got the patches fixed up no wood is exposed whatever I had you know I know you roofers you're probably cringing hey I'm not a roofer but I had to help uh, fix my mom's roof you know make sure the wood is protected from an angle looks good I'm gonna try to make myself uh, make my way down now without killing myself then I'm gonna mow her lawn her lawn definitely needs mowing see first mow of the season in Queens First, we're going to do some weed whacking. charger that I have over here is very old. It's going to take a while to charge it up. So I figured I'd whip out the, the backup. This is my uh, Lawn Boy 20 inch with a Kohler engine on it. And uh, I haven't used this in like six years. Okay? You ready? Still has gas in it from six years. It's an auto choke. Let's see. <laughs> six years, fellas.
was kind of um, not rusted, but stiff. So it just moved it around. It was like corroded or something in that joint. So that's why it was revving so high. But it's now moving freely. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm gonna mow the front. Okay, so the backup is the reason why we have backups, right? Is when the other one doesn't work. So, you know, it looks okay. Looks way better than before, doesn't it? Listen, so I take it back. Uh, I wasn't even into small engines six years ago. So, um, I think I got this three years ago. Nevertheless, I haven't used this thing in three years, okay? And uh, it had old gas in it for three years. And I just pulled it on the third, third pull it started. And it uh, mowed everything here. Uh, my battery's about to run out, so my adventure over here in uh, New York City is gonna be cut short because I did not bring my charger. So what you see is what you get. Uh, it's been uh, charging for about 15 minutes. Let's see if this Mama Jamma starts up. Nope, not gonna start. Uh. I thought the beauty was reliable. The battery's too weak. I might have to finish the back lawn with uh, with the lawn boy. Bring a new battery next time I come for the Murray. Uh, you know what? It has an old battery in it. Maybe it's just Dunsky, you know? I'm going to go to the backyard and uh, use the remainder of the battery and uh, show you guys on the time lapse how we do there. Oh, so as you guys know, I just got back from my mom's. Holy cow, the whole day was just insane. Fixed a roof, climbed on the roof. There was that little part where I could have just like reached over and fixed that last part. But then I looked down and it was like 20 feet down and I knew that if I slipped, that's it. I'm done, you know? So I just left it. What are you gonna do? The thing was like 25 feet tall, you know? Uh, anyway. Uh, the Black Beauty didn't work, so fortunately you saw that uh, Lawn Boy 20-inch uh, push mower. It's rear self-propelled, by the way. It's awesome. Fired right up after three pulls, and uh, it performed fantastic. Uh, the grass was pretty long at my mom's, you know, almost like a foot tall. So when you went over it, right, I wanted to go kind of slow, because if you went too fast, all the grass will clog up the blades, and it'll try to stall, you know. So I actually had to go through it again, you know, two times. And um, I actually did a diagonally, too, just so it would, you know, uh, get all the little you know, spikes that were still sticking up from not being fully cut. Um, anyway, so um, on the drive home, right, I got a text message from the dude that bought my snapper with the snapperizer. Remember, I just left it on my driveway for 30 bucks, right? So he sends me a video of it working. And here it is. pretty cool that the guy got his um snapper working you know and um you know i'm happy for him i didn't want to work on that old piece of junk you know what i mean and uh, he actually asked me he said hey if you ever run into those snapper uh, snappers again with the high vac and, uh, and all that uh give them a call you know you're gonna run into that stuff eventually um also uh i got um 
that guy paid me 50 bucks for the two side spindles of the front axle of uh, Mondo Mowers number two, you know? So Mondo Mowers number two, even though we took that apart and the frame in the front was all cracked and stuff, it's still pretty profitable because I sold the transmission for 50, the front I'm getting 50 for, uh, some other stuff that I also sold on eBay a little bit and um, at the same time, I've still got parts from that, uh, that mower, you know. So I'm getting 50 for those two spindles, right? And uh, just driving home, eBay notified me that somebody bought the uh, head assembly, cylinder head assembly, from my MTD Zongshen Power No More engine that I got from Nick from Medford. So I had it listed for $38.88 with $28 shipping. So the guy paid me like 70 bucks for this. I told you, these MTDs, even though they're lousy engines, because they blow all the time, right? The Power Mores by Zongshen, or I like to call power no more, right? Uh, people still want to try to fix those engines, you know what I mean? So if you have parts from it, it's really worth a lot, quite a lot of money. So here's the uh, valve cover, valve cover bolts are on it, uh, the spacer for the carburetor as well as the rocker arms, the springs, the valves, uh, cylinder head, the tins, right? There's some more tins on the front and the side that I'm including with the auction. And also, I think this is the breather assembly cover, which I'm still going to give them as well. You know, I just took a picture of all the stuff I didn't want, you know. And actually, the gasket for the uh, Zongshen Power Moors are actually made uh, steel, you know what I mean? Like the Hondas. So, it actually looks like it's two layers. I mean, I guess he could still use it, you know. And two push rods. I'm glad I found all this stuff because I just threw it in a box and stuff. And you have to look at the picture when they... Um, when they buy it, you look at the picture that you took and you're like, you have to include everything in that picture. You know what I mean? So when you take the pictures, make sure you don't have your tools and stuff around because they're going to try to say, hey, those channel locks over there, how come you didn't send those? I'm like, well, it was in the picture, wasn't it? So you have to be careful. Every time you take a picture of the stuff that you're selling, make sure the stuff in the picture is the stuff you're selling. If you leave like your phone over there, hey, where's the phone? What phone? Well, you have a phone in the picture. Well, that's not in the auction. Well, it's in the picture, so you have to send it. You know, so be careful. Anyway, I'm exhausted uh, all day at my mom's. I wasn't able to troubleshoot the no compression on that uh, lawnmower, the uh, lawn tractor. I'll figure that out tomorrow. But then my friend Mike Lynch, who lives around the area, right, he always wanted a uh, new um, uh, pressure washer. As you recall from previous episodes, maybe about a year ago, he gave me his old pressure washer and I fixed it, right? But it really wasn't very strong, you know? And I says, do you want me to bring it to you? And he's like, you know what? I was watching the video. You're right. That power washer sucks. He's like, ah, just throw it away or trade it or do something. I, I think I did trade it for something. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, uh, and also I found a uh, pressure washer that works perfectly, has a Rato engine on it, R-A-T-O, Rato engine, it's a Honda clone, you know, a uh, horizontal shaft. Anyway, as you remember, my neighbor was throwing out a couple weed whackers in that pressure washer, he just gave it to me, fired right up, I used it to, you know, last year, last summer, whatever. Anyway, so uh, he needs a pressure washer, he asked me for it. I feel kind of funny about selling it to him because he gave me his. What am I going to do? Not give him one? You know, I know this is a good pressure washer and stuff, but I feel funny about charging him. I think I'm just going to give it to him and see if he offers me any money, you know. But uh, that's it for today. Um, sorry I wasn't able to troubleshoot the no compression lawn tractor, Murray, but we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, it's been a long, long day. I hope you guys enjoyed our trip to uh, New York City, Queens, and uh, see how the other half lives. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.